Hi, in this video, I want to show you a really interesting book. This book is called Differential Equations and the Calculus of Variations, and it's by Al Elskoltz. And the reason this book is so interesting is because this is actually a Russian math book that has been translated to English by this company known as Murr Publishers. Note it says Moscow here. So I bought this book because for years, people have been leaving comments asking me if I have any books by Murr Publishers. And I always read the comments and I always searched for books and I always thought they were too expensive. So one day I decided, you know what? I'm going to get at least one book from Murr Publishers just to check it out, just to see how good this book actually is. And honestly, I am completely blown away by the quality of this book. So Murr Publishers is a publishing company that still exists today but it existed originally in the Soviet Union and it was completely state funded at the time. And because of that, they were able to produce books and sell them at very low prices. So basically they take Russian math books and Russian science books, even cookbooks. I mean, there's all kinds of weird books that exist by Murr Publishers and they translate them to English, Spanish, and other languages. So Murr Publishers is actually super popular in other countries besides the US, which is really interesting. And if you try to find this book, I'll try to leave a link in the description. You might be able to get it at an affordable price, but these are like really rare and really limited, at least in the US. So in this video, we're gonna take a look inside this book and we're also gonna do a simple problem. And I'm gonna to try to pick a problem that you can understand. So if you just have like some basic calculus, you should be able to understand the math and the problem I picked. I'm just gonna pick something that is easy to explain and easy to do. So if you know some calculus, you should be able to understand some of the math in this book. All right, let's go ahead and take a look inside this awesome book. The inside of the dust jacket has this really cool description. We should read it. This text is meant for students of higher schools and deals with the most important sections of mathematics, differential equations and the calculus of variations. The first part describes the theory of differential equations and reviews the methods for integrating these equations and investigating their solutions. So this is a lot of stuff that you would see in a DE course. If you took a differential equations course today, you would see a lot of the math in this book. The second part gives an idea of the calculus of variations and surveys the methods for solving variational problems. Apart from its main purpose, the textbook is of interest to expert mathematicians. Cool. Let's just carefully open this. Murr Publishers. Yeah, I don't know how to read that. Wow. Differential equations and the calculus of variations. Translated from the Russian by George Yankovsky. Printed in the Soviet Union. It's like a stamp. It looks like it's been stamped, which is really interesting. I have other books uh, by Murr Publishers. Now a few, not many, and they don't have that stamp. So that's really interesting that this one was actually stamped. To the reader, Murr Publishers welcomes your comments on the content, translation, and design of this book. We would also be pleased to receive any proposals you care to make about our future publications. Wow, interesting. The subject of this book is the theory of differential equations in the calculus of variations. It is based on a course of lectures which the author delivered for a number of years at the physics department of the Lomonosov State University of Moscow. These are the table of contents. And so part one is on differential equations. So a lot of this material you would see if you took a class in college, notice these topics are all very familiar if you've taken DE. So if you're studying differential equations today, these are things that you would actually learn. So in theory, you could use this book to learn differential equations. And it does have a lot of examples, I was surprised. So I'll show you some of the examples in the book in a minute. Systems of differential equations, that's also sometimes covered in a course. Theory of stability, that might not be something you see in an introductory course. And then partial differential equations. And then part two is on the calculus of variations. So this is typically something you would not see in a differential equations course um, if you took one today. So, and it has answers to problems. Here it talks a little bit about the motivation for differential equations. Basically it says that oftentimes it's difficult to find formulas that can explain some physical phenomena directly without actually using derivatives. And basically here it says, equations in which the unknown function or the vector function appear under the sign of the derivative or the differential are called differential equations. 
Let me give you some examples. For example, this one is the equation of radioactive disintegration. It's a really easy one to solve. Here you have the equation of the motion of a particle of mass m under the influence of a force f dependent on the time. And here you have Poisson's equation. That's a fun word to say, Poisson. I believe it's French. Here's the first example in the actual book. They tell us that dy dx is equal to y over x. And it says that each point different from zero, zero, the slope of the tangent line to the integral curve is the ratio y over x, which basically means that these slopes are the same as the slopes of lines that start at the origin to a point x, y. And here they give you this picture here which describes the integral curves of this differential equation. They start off by talking about separable equations. So you have one example, two examples, quite a few, three examples, four examples, five examples. I mean, this is more examples than you would see in a modern textbook. I missed six, six was here. Seven examples, so that's quite a bit of examples just for separable, eight examples, nine examples, 10 examples, and then they talk about equations that lead to separable equations, and these are also studied in a differential equations course. Basically, you make a substitution. You would let some variable be equal to ax plus by, which here apparently they use z, and then you go from there. Here's their first example. So basically, they make a substitution and it becomes separable. So again, these are all things that you would see if you took a regular course on differential equations. Here are the exercises for chapter one. So basically you would read all of this and then you get to the exercises. So you just have a bunch of differential equations here and they don't really tell you how to solve them. Like they don't tell you what technique to use, which I think is good because that way you have to figure it out and you learn more that way. Now it's quite a bit to read before you get to the exercises, but you probably want to read this book with a piece of paper and a pencil and just like work through all the examples which are really good, and there's plenty of them, which I think make this book really good for someone who wants to just learn a little bit of differential equations. Look at all of these problems, 66 problems. Let's go ahead now and take a look at the answers in the back of the book. It looks like you have answers and at least partial hints or hints to every single problem in this book. I mean, look at this, everything has a solution here. Here's the rest of the answers and it goes all the way to the very last problem, 66. So this book has answers to every single problem in the book. I think that makes this an incredible book for self-study. All right, let's go ahead and solve this differential equation. So this differential equation is going to be what's called a separable differential equation. Basically the goal in solving a problem like this is to separate everything. So you want basically f of x dx on one side and g of y dy on the other. So all of your x's together with a dx on one side, and then all of your y's together with a dy on the other side. Once you have that, what you can do is you can integrate both sides and you can go from there. So in this case, you notice we have a y here and a dx, an x here and a dy, so that's no good. So as a good first step, maybe let's just add this over to the other side. So we have the tangent of y dx equals cotangent of x dy. And this problem is pretty easy relative to some of the other problems. This is actually the very first exercise in the book that I was showing you. So we're still not there. Uh, we still need to get all of the x's together with the dx and all the y's together with a dy. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna divide both sides by cotangent and divide both sides by tangent. So dividing by cotangent, dividing by tangent, this is gonna come over here. So we'll get one over cotangent x dx, but then we're also dividing the tangent. So this will come over here, one over tangent y, dy. And we want to integrate this, so this needs to be a little bit cleaner. So we want to write something that we know how to integrate. Well, 1 over cotangent is tangent, and 1 over tangent is cotangent. And now we can integrate both of these. Now you might have um, these memorized, I do. I'm going to go ahead and write the answer down and then I'll come to the side here and I'll explain how I came up with it. So the integral of tangent is negative ln absolute value cosine x and this is equal to the natural log absolute value sine y plus some constant of integration which I'll call say c tilde. So how did I do that? Well basically in my mind 
I think tangent is sine over cosine, and then I make a u substitution. So let me just show you the work really quickly over here. And once you see the process once, you can kind of do it in your head eventually, and then you can just memorize it. So tangent is sine over cosine. And so if you wanted to show the work for this integral, you would let u be equal to the cosine function. So then du, that's taking the derivative of both sides here, that will give you negative sine x dx. There is no negative here though in the integrand, so you'd multiply by negative one. And then you would make your u substitution. Basically your sine x dx would be negative du. So you pull the negative out. Cosine is u, so you get this. And this is a familiar integral. You would get negative ln absolute value of u plus a constant, and then u is cosine. For cotangent, it's exactly the same thing, except you have a sine on the bottom. And notice that the derivative of sine is cosine, so that you're not gonna get a negative here. So that process, this mental process, will let you memorize these. All right, we want to get rid of the logs, but there's a negative one here. So let's bring it upstairs using the power rule for logs. So we get ln absolute value, cosine x to the negative one equals natural log absolute value sine y plus c tilde. To get rid of the natural logs, what we're going to do is we're going to exponentiate both sides. So I'm gonna put an e here, I'm gonna put an e here. And I wanna emphasize that all of this is actually in parentheses. This goes away. So we get the absolute value of cosine x to negative one. Here I'm gonna show an extra step. This is e natural log absolute value sine y times, and then this is e to the c tilde. The reason there's multiplication here is because when you multiply things like this and the bases are the same, you just add the exponents, okay? So this is a tricky step for people. Boom, goes away. We have one over cosine, just bringing it down, right, making the exponent positive, equal to absolute value sine y, e to the c tilde. We have two absolute values, so we can drop them. And when you drop them, you get a plus or minus. Plus or minus. Uh, I'm gonna put this one first. And then we can rename this. We don't know, it's arbitrary, it could be anything, so let's call it c. So this will be one over cosine x equals c times sine y. And so you could basically uh, multiply by cosine now. So this would be uh, sine y cosine x times c equals one. And as long as c is not zero, um, you could divide by c. So you could write this as sine y cosine x equals one over c, you know, if c is not zero. So yeah, or you can just leave it like this, that works too. So kind of a, a simple problem, but um, this is the very first exercise. Uh, this is like number one in uh, this book here uh, by Elskoltz, Differential Equations and the Calculus of Variation. So that's it. I just wanted to show you this book. Again, it's called Differential Equations and the Calculus of Variations. And if I can find a copy, I will try to leave a link in the description. It's pretty cool to look at old books like this. Good luck.